Factor. Back to Brian's Beat. Felix the cat, the wonderful, wonderful cat. Whenever he gets in a fix, he reaches into his bag of tricks. Felix the cat, the wonderful, wonderful cat. You laugh so much, your sides will ache, your heart will go fit a bad watch. And Felix the wonderful cat. Welcome to hour number two of Brian's Beat, Saturday morning. Lots of clouds upstairs. What else is going on? You know, we could use a little more heat. The thermometer still in the in the 40s. It will push into the 50s today, but I don't know. Here we are, May 11th. I'm hoping for mid 60s, maybe even the low 70s. Guess I'm pushing it just a little too much. So we talked a little bit about what's going on in Gaza. I don't want to make that the the big highlight of this hour because, quite frankly. Like you, uh, and it could be an entirely different issue, I am worried about what's going on not only here in the Commonwealth with the Bacon Hill lawmakers, but also Washington, D.C. And some whistleblowers, I, I, I always get a kick out of the the term whistleblower. I know what a whistleblower is. But apparently some whistleblowers got into the ear of Republican Congress men and women. In particular, those on the House Judiciary Committee. And members of the judiciary were rather alarmed So much so that they fired off a letter the other day. I think it's dated on May 4th. So that would be, what, a week from today? Who's working on a Saturday? Think about that for a second. Anyway. So this letter was written from the House Judiciary Committee to the FBI Director Christopher Wray, questioning some of the hiring practices and some of the new protocols of the Bureau. To give you an idea, a little background here. When President Biden was inaugurated on that very day, his first executive order was I didn't know this was numero uno, but the first executive order was instituting diversity, equity, and inclusion throughout the executive branch. So that would be the Department of Education, the Department of Health and Human Services, all of those Veterans Affairs, all of those departments, Department of Justice. Three months in, three months in, the FBI introduced their DEI chief. Now, according to the judiciary's letter, the FBI special agent hiring is way down, citing a couple of reasons. Your distrust, my distrust in the bureau, and of course, fewer applicants. Give you an idea. According to whistleblowers, And mentioned in this letter from the House Judiciary over to Christopher Wray, the director of the FBI. According to whistleblowers from the mid-1990s to the early 2000s, the FBI had more than 100,000 applications for special agent. I know a lot of people that, that wanted to be in the FBI. You know, when I was a kid, oh, yeah, you know, I I think it was because of the FBI program, not necessarily knowing what it entailed. But people wanted to be in the FBI. So at any rate, you're talking 100,000, roughly 1% or 1,000 of those applicants a year graduated through the academy at Quantico. 
Fast forward to February of this year. The FBI reported, the FBI reported, they currently have an estimated 48,000 applications on file. Just looking at the applications, you're talking 52,000 less. So, what have they done? Well, according according to the to the letter now. And I'm going to read the quote from the letter that way you don't think I'm making up something here. To more easily accommodate a larger pool of available applicants, FBI special agent hiring standards have been relaxed and requirements measurably lowered in categories that include physical fitness, illicit drug use, financial irregularities, mental health, full-time work experience, and integrity. Now think about that for a second. No matter how you feel pro or con about having an FBI, we've got an FBI. And I can sit here and tell you there have been times that I've questioned the integrity of the FBI. But to think that the House Judiciary Committee is firing a letter off to to the director of the FBI with whistleblowers saying that the standards, the integrity of the applicants, you know, you don't care as much about that. What exactly does that mean? Does that mean they can go around and and lie, fabricate stuff? What does it mean? You're relaxing the requirements dealing with integrity. What about mental health? Think about this for a second. Mental health. Do you want some dodo bird working for the FBI? Or, look, I guess anybody can put in an application. But don't you want that application screened? And, you know, you see, or maybe a better question is how far are you willing to go? How far are you willing to go? Dealing with mental health, financial irregularities. Now, think about that. I mean, look, lots of people have filed for bankruptcy. They've, they've been late on rent payments. Their credit score might not be all that good. But isn't that person vulnerable to somebody from the outside saying, hey, I'll take care of these bills for you. We want you to do X, Y, or Z. Financial irregularities. Illicit drug use. Where do we go with that one? I mean, if a a person that's applying admits that they've tried marijuana, do we say no to that person? If that person tried cocaine a long time ago, do we disqualify that person? Again, I'm, I'm asking a question here. I don't know where you want. Full-time work experience. Well, aren't there a lot of people that come out of college that apply to be in the FBI? So where where do we go with all of this? But when I hear that The standards have been relaxed, requirements immeasurably lowered. And then we tie this in with diversity, equity, and inclusion. It conjures up an image that isn't pleasant. Physical fitness. Now, I... I, I guess maybe I've watched too many programs on TV dealing with the FBI. But don't they have to chase after people every once in a while? And you and I know that there are police officers today 
that have probably had too many donuts and they're not going to win too many races. Do we do we want FBI agents looking like that? Is that what all of this lowering this the standards is all about? 508 996 is how you get onto the program. Hello. Hi, Brian. Hi, I Brian. Like the show. I like your show. The guy said he didn't like it, and I miss, but I miss Phil Larry the whole bunch. All right. And I think Phil was a real Okay, let's not go show. down that road. I can say my voice. So you anyway. Gotta, um, but I can't, get, you know, go ahead. I'm not saying nothing wrong. Anyway, talking about low, it's, I got to say a few things before I hang up because my phone's going to die anyway. I um, talking about lowering standards. That seems to be the whole world today. That's you know, that's how it is everywhere on every job. As far as I'm concerned, I mean, it's you just, know, you, 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 you kind of you know. You're, I'm just going to say you're kind of right. It it does seem that the standards that you and I had to put up with back in the '70s and '80s are way different than today's standards. Yeah. Well, listen. When you ever go out. And get uh, even for just regular people that are waiting on you. Uh, uh, work. They don't want to work. These kids today just don't want to work, and they don't know how to work. Talk about standards. Every place I went to yesterday was disgusting. It's awful. What kind You're of place? Paying. Oh, from the pharmacy to um, to uh, the restaurant. It's disgusting. This new generation. You know, I, I worked like a slave when I was young. I worked at Chatham Bars Inn, and they owned me. I worked three shifts and on Sundays, too, okay? And I was 18 years old, and I worked my ASS off. I started doing dishes at 12 years old, and I loved every minute of it. I couldn't get enough to work because, you know, when you worked, you made money, and you could get what you wanted. These kids today, everything's handed to them on a silver platter and they don't even know what they're doing it's awful they don't know how to, they have no respect they don't know how to work hmm. it's disgusting the society today is is terrible so anyway what i wanted to make my comments on is god is uh what's going on out in israel i'm sorry but i think biden should provide them with the weapons they need to 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 take hamas out i don't agree with that at all but they're not taking at hamas all. out yeah, well, that's why they want the weapons, though. You think so? Yeah, that's what they're saying. Well, that, that's what you, and, and, and you and you're believing what they say. Yeah, that, you you you're not you don't agree with that. Well, I I'm I'm looking right here at at Benjamin Netanyahu's plan for Gaza 2035. Now imagine he's got a plan for Gaza 2035 that calls for. The removal of all Palestinians, never mind uh, Hamas, which he hasn't been able to, to beat. Even even the Israelis admit uh, that they haven't been able to defeat Hamas because they're not going to be able to get at him. So, no, I, I, I think that there is a grand plan. You know, you know what they say, follow the money. And I think that he's he's got a big tourism and um, trade hub that he's trying to put together. That is going to be uh, a financial boon for that area. I don't know. I listen to Le- Levin, however you say it, his show too, and uh, it's just the opposite. But um, well, it's awful what they did. You know what I mean? They 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 can't get away with that. I, well, you know, but that is- they you know that has happened, and in listening to you say that. I would say, so Hamas is supposed to, not Hamas, the Palestinians are supposed to repeatedly take what Israel is doing and and never, ever fight back? Anyway, let me tell you something else. um, I I just heard on the news about the credit card that he wants to do Biden. I agree with that. Take the late fees away and and the percentage rate down. It's, it, one of it my sounds cards. good, but all of a sudden, government is is once again trying to tell folks how to run their business. I, I hear what you're saying, and I do appreciate your call. 508-996-0500. Let's take one more before the break. Hello. Hey, 
What's up, Brian? Wing and my wang. Yeah, that's, what, that's what I figured. Anyway, um, you know, going back to what you were saying about the FBI and DEI, you know, DEI is about, t- you know, you get that bar and people are always trying to hurdle the bar in their life hypothetically, you know, education and work hard and, you know, uh, all that, all those hours in the library or all those hours working at the shop to get, to hone your craft. But DEI, uh, I always say is, uh, didn't earn it. That's what it stands for. <laughs> so they're taking the bar and they're, they're not raising the bar, but they're making it so you can get under it. Um, I mean, just look at the press secretary. It's a limbo that, bar. Uh, yeah, just look at the current press secretary. She wasn't qualified to do the job she's doing, but she got it was a DEI hire, so um, she got in. And what you're going to see over a period of time, a DEI I think is going to go away because in in businesses that are um, for profit businesses, they they can't you can't survive with incompetent people or people that aren't prepared for the challenge, whatever you want to call it. People that just get the job because of uh, race, color, creed, whatever you want to call it. So um, how often do you think that happens? Which, what part happens? Um, people get jobs uh, de- because of DEI, because they're not qualified. I, there, uh, there are I a lot of people that get jobs think, that aren't qualified, but it has nothing to do with DEI. That's why I'm asking. Oh, I think in government, it's, uh, it's, it's rampant. It's 100%. I mean, if you and I went for a job together, Brian... Uh, you're going to get the job for sure. We're the same age, uh, same you know, similar education, similar intelligence. I think you're more intelligent than me, and I do. And then I deserve the job. Idiot. Uh, DEI doesn't. It doesn't matter. It's che- it's checking a box. It's 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 it. it you know, you're not. It it they because they have. It's basically a quota. Um, it's the same old system. But haven't we had haven't we had quotas for the longest time? Yeah, but now it's institutionalized different, in a different way. Um, you know, there, I, I think there's a lot of like. Make a long story short is I think that um, you know we, we uh, um, there's the DEI is going to go away from business uh, because business has to have people that are competent and and uh, and they you know you'll go out of business if you if you have DEI hires in the long run. Government, it's going to be there forever, and, and in the teaching profession, I, I'm, it, it's kind of scary too because we're not putting out great students anymore because uh, the policies uh, don't gear up for it. You know, dumbing the test down. Uh, we have great te- we have some great teachers, but but the administration is uh, is ruining our education system with all of this crap. So, well, how do we know who the good teachers are and who the bad ones are? I don't know. It's not my job. <laughs> Somebody else has to do it. I got yeah. you, man. Hey, thanks for the All call. Right. I do you appreciate know. it. Five zero eight nine nine six zero five hundred. Brian sitting in the chair. You hate me. You love me. You love me. You hate me. I go through the same thing every night when I sit down in front of the TV. If you're spending less than $20 a month for prescription drugs, great. If not, monthlyfrx.com might be a good option. for. Sure. It's called Brian's Beat. Welcome back, 508-996-0500. Talking about the FBI, apparently, because of diversity, equity, and inclusion, they have relaxed their hiring standards for FBI special agents and the requirements. Categories like physical fitness, illicit drug use, financial irregularities, mental health, full-time work experience, and integrity. It's a lot there on the list. What do you think? 508-996-0500. Hello. Well, Brian, I, uh, I have a problem with people that are tricked into giving up on taxation with representation. You know, America was founded on the principle that we, the people, are the ones paying taxes. The rich don't pay taxes, yet they get to snob around and tell us who's who. And in doing so, they come up with that slang phrase about diversity and inclusion. Well, that's taxation with representation. And you're also, being tricked in, also. You're, you're being tricked into giving up on taxation with representation. So how is DEI taxation without representation? 
I'm saying it is representation. That's what diversity is. Oh, you're saying it is representation. Okay. Yeah. And it's uh, inclusion. Well, yeah, that's taxation with representation. They they came up with that nasty smear slang phrase. Oh, these people, they don't deserve their taxes. It just makes it easier for the bigots to hog the taxes. And that's the trick. They snob around and pretend that they deserve it all and that nobody who actually is chipping in uh, gets a piece of it. All right. You know, I I, I guess we could go down that road. And I I don't exactly know how we patch that part together. But we've had callers that make some good points that they don't believe that the majority. they, They didn't come out like this, but my brain is thinking that the majority population is going to be able to get the jobs that they used to be able to get. And I'm sitting here and saying, well, how do the qualified black, brown, whatever color or uh, seeming handicapped person get that position without some kind of aid? Doesn't have to be DEI. Well, how many jobs can be run from a desktop computer or even a laptop computer? Many. You know, I mean, it, it, you could run a garbage truck. But you can't run the FBI. Computer. You can't run FBI agents around the, well, the country like that. that's not necessarily true. There, there are tons and tons and tons of just the chemistry lab. You could have some handicapped, you know, physically handicapped person that knows chemistry backwards and forwards. And uh, to be able to run tests or to do the computer modeling. Yeah, I, or yeah I, and I won't argue that, but we're talking about special agents. These are the people that yeah, are out well, on the streets. A special agent. You're just doing the data on what's the evidence, right? And, and the other scam that uh, the, these phonies who are the representation without taxation crowd, you know, the super rich are not paying taxes, and they hog our dollars. They hog our roads. They hog our, they're the ones that are making the bridges collapse. They build faulty bridges with their lousy corporations, and then when they collapse, they collect the insurance. I mean, they are some sick SOBs, and when when it comes down to America's infrastructure being maintained, uh, we the people chip in our taxes on April 15th, and we hope to buy ourselves something nice. I got you, know, you on that. Look, um, I I hear your complaint. I'm not quite sure how it fits in in this particular case. Maybe it does, and I'm missing it. Wouldn't be the first time, won't be the last. Hello. Hey, Brian. Hey, Brian. Hey, so the rich don't pay taxes? Really? Huh? According I mean, to him. Really? How, how, can you, how can anyone say that? That's just somebody with an axe to grind because they never made it, quote unquote, made it. How, but the rich pay their, what, because they don't pay to, to the ratio that maybe we pay, but they sure as hell are paying taxes, and I guarantee it's a lot more than I'm paying. Well, I'll tell but you what, and if, they, and if they're running a business, their business is paying taxes. Of course they are. How can, this is where people lose the credibility. I get it. Maybe you want someone who's making a million dollars to pay half a million dollars in taxes a year. Well, you know what? Put your neck out there. Open a business. Hire people. Put up with the bull crap you have to put up with with people because they're our biggest challenge of just trying to get people to show up to, to work, to do the job, to produce. You know, these people are funny when they call and say the rich don't pay taxes. Well, then sign me up. I'll do whatever it takes. But I know I'm going to pay taxes up on that end of it, too. I'm a, I'm a little guy. I'm paying taxes. They're paying taxes. You may not like the amount they pay, but they're paying a hell of a lot more than we, the working slobs out here, are paying. It just blows me away. Right away, I just say, okay, here we go. This is just somebody who's ripped about the fact that, you know, uh, somebody's making money. And to blame them for the shoddy work being done, really? I mean, you, you can go down this rabbit hole all day long. You know, all I can tell you, there are people that own companies that don't sleep at night. Because they're worried about keeping that company going. Welcome to that. Yeah, world. I don't, I'm, you know, not to stick up for the caller, but I don't think he's really thinking about that type of owner who is pressing the flesh and actually uh, trying to to make the deadlines and stuff like that. I think he's thinking more the the owners that are out doing pitch and putt and making deals. 
Well, they've earned it. You know what? I'm sorry. I, I don't begrudge those people. I wish it were me. And if that had the way, the way the chips had fallen and it had been me, I'd be thrilled about it. But I don't begrudge anyway. I just think that's, that's a sickness. You wake up in the morning, you're jealous. Well, I'm not jealous. I go out and I try to make my way. And, and that's the way it is. I'll do the best I can. And if I have a few bucks in my pocket, I'm thrilled. So I just, it just, it's after a while, sometimes you just know, as soon as the, you hear the, the first line come out, you're like, oh yeah. I, is I, that, I, is that what you call out of a crock. No, it isn't. But you know what? That's kind of this last call. Just I thought we were going to go a different route here. It was actually to comment on what Shawnee had said about people not working. And I'm in the business. I have 20 people work under me. And that's my biggest challenge. I can speak to that. It's trying to get people to show up. We have good jobs, good benefits. They don't want to show up anymore. And I say the reason why this happened, because this is the generation of like you and I grew up. We, we didn't know how poor we were. But we, we made it, and we smiled our way through it. But now, boy, you buy a kid a car. Oh, well, I didn't want that car. I wanted this car. You and I were just happy to have four wheels to get behind and get from point A to point B. So what's happened is we've groomed the kids now to expect more with doing less to get it. That is why I called. You know, my I, I think you I, your comment is well-placed. But I, I remember something from John Adams. Of, of all people, the, the former president, number two. And he was training his sons to be the next generation. So the generation after that could be that lazy lout type type of kid. I think that even the folks that are known as today's middle class have made it to that particular juncture in life where the kids that they are producing well, they, they, you know, I had this type of car. You know, you don't like this one. You you'd prefer the yellow one as opposed to the blue one. I I think that's that's where we are. I think that that's our society right now. The question is, how do you turn it around? How do you change it? You don't, because we've gone too far. Anytime you try to change something that's gone too far, you get the oh my god, how could you do that? How can we deprive them of this? That we just we've gone down that rabbit hole. Unfortunately, that's why I'm glad I'm north of sixty because it's not going to turn around. It is what it is. I still love life, but I see the way it's going and I see all that's changed. I don't like it. I just turn my head to it and I try to enjoy what part of life that I still enjoy. I'll listen to my seventies and sixties music and just enjoy and try to you know kind of live some of those memories out day to day and enjoy what used to be got you man thanks for the call thank you friend i do appreciate it 508 996 is how you get on to brian's beat today if if you're just tuning in and i get it good morning to you first of all the house judiciary committee which is primarily run by republicans sent off a formal letter to the FBI director, Christopher Wray, earlier in the week, questioning some of the hiring practices of the Bureau. Uh, To put a little history behind this, on Inauguration Day for Joe Biden, his first executive order was instituting DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion throughout the entire executive branch. About three months later, the FBI introduced a DEI chief. According to Judiciary's letter, the FBI special agent hiring is weighed down, citing the nation's distrust in the Bureau. And I think that there is a lot of distrust in the Bureau. What else? You know, give you an idea. You remember the Hunter Biden laptop story, how that was suppressed? Got a lot of play here on on this station. But there was also an armed pre-dawn raid and arrest of a pro-life advocate under this administration. And then the Richmond Field Office, Richmond, Virginia Field Office's infamous Catholic memo. This breeds distrust. No matter how you feel about the particular issue, it has to make you wonder what the heck is going on within the FBI. And so, the judiciary sent this letter, and part of this letter, and I, and I 
typed up a couple of parts here verbatim so you don't think, well, I'm just kind of making this up. Here's the big quote. To more easily accommodate a larger pool of available applicants, FBI special agent hiring standards have been relaxed and requirements measurably lowered in categories that include physical fitness, illicit drug use, financial irregularities, mental health, full-time work experience, and integrity. Now, each one of these is problematic. But the one that really sticks out like a sore thumb to me is the integrity. Because who knows what the mental health issue might be. It might be nothing major. Full-time work experience. Maybe you never had a full-time job. Maybe there's a good reason that you never had a full-time job. You've worked part-time jobs. Financial irregularities. How deep do we go with that? Did you miss your rent? Or did you have to file for bankruptcy? Illicit drug use. Illicit is marijuana. Illicit is heroin. And, you know, I think the FBI could use some people that are former addicts as agents. But that's... That's just my thought right there. Physical fitness. I think that has to be included one way or the other. If you end up having to chase somebody down, you don't want to be huffing and puffing. Where's where's my next uh, donut coming from? You don't want somebody that looks like Homer Simpson. And to me, uh, if you look like Homer Simpson, it doesn't matter the skin color. Doesn't matter the, the gender that you profess to be. 508-996-0500. Hello. Hello. Hey, I think you should change the name to the KFGBI. KFGBI. The KFGBI, yeah. A little bit of KGB, a little bit of FBI, and you get the KFGBI. <laughs> now, that system that broke down in the Soviet Union is being birthed over here. What not you think? What system that burned more, down? More like it every day. Which system are you talking about? The Bolshevikism. Tyranny. Can't have you swearing, man. I did not swear. Oh, I thought I heard you. Bolshevik. I said Bolshevik. Bolshevik. I did not swear, Brian. I'm not swearing on the radio. Please don't accuse me of that. Open your ears, senor. Open my ears. You said I swore and I didn't. All right, maybe it sounded, but I did not swear. I did not curse. I said Bolshevikism and tyranny is coming here. A dumbed-down populace is right here. Look what entertains people these days. Listen to the music that some people listen to. Listen to the garbage that they're throwing out on the radio. It's all brainwashing that's being you done. You know what? They, they said the same thing about the Jefferson Airplane, the Doors, Grateful Dead, the music no, that came like out in the time. 60s. Not like this. Jefferson Airplane and the Doors were actually great musicians. The Doors, the only bad thing I can say about the Doors is that they never were able to find a bass player. They didn't need one. They they had a keyboardist who could play the bass on the keyboard. I digress. The, the thing that what I'm trying play. to say is music has changed over the generation. Even when when jazz became popular, people didn't like it. A because black people were were performing heads. it. They went over people's heads. But the Doors had bass players on their albums, but they could never replicate that sound truly live because they could for some reason they could never find. They, uh, a, they didn't want to pay the person. That's something else. For whatever reason, they couldn't find the chemistry. But on their studio albums, they had bass players. But, Brian, the music that's out today is, is, is totally different. It, it's, it's total garbage. The lyrics, music today, what entertains people, that's, you, that's what, that is a very good indicator of where the society goes, is what entertains them. And the stuff that I hear on the radio today it's, it's basically, it's so much computer-driven noise. It's all done by drum machine and, and, and loops. Yes. Yeah, and I, look, the, uh, we, we are definitely totally in the age of, of technology. 
There's no doubt about it. And if you want to take it to that extent, I, I would look at the lyrics. And, I, you know, that that's more troubling to me. But I can t- take it from music and say, OK, so turn on Netflix or Prime or or some of these cable channels. And you're getting the same kind of stuff on 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 that part of the idiot box. Yeah, entertainment. What yeah. entertains people can tell you where the society is headed. In this modern day, they'll take whatever is thrown at them and they'll get entertained by complete and utter garbage. And that's a sad view of where society is. And we're, and we're headed toward just stupid times. So, okay, you, you, I guess, I guess, I guess people. where, thank you, I, I do appreciate the call. What I see, and you know, maybe because I'm on this side of the of the business, is that generation after generation has their own idea of what is acceptable norm, what is acceptable entertainment, and they used to have big censors back in the 1950s when I Love Lucy and and those shows came out. Yet. Those programs were unacceptable to a, a fraction of the of society. Move into the later 60s when Laugh-In and Love American Style and some of those programs came out. Oh, how could they be putting that on TV? Even um, I remember folks saying the same thing about that girl. That girl with, with Marlo Thomas. Move into the 70s. And then you started getting more of these um, programs like Phil Donahue. Uh, I'm not sure Oprah came out. I think Oprah came out in the 80s. Sally, Jesse, Raphael. And, And each decade, programming has changed, but it it has kept pace with the people of of that of that era. And so as we look at, you know, I I don't get into these um Housewives of the Rich and Famous, or what's that other one with the uh, Kardashians? And, you know, the, those aren't shows for me, but the kids of today, they like it. And then when they start to have kids, you know, they say, oh, God, the programming that comes out for these kids. At least in my day, we had the Kardashians. That's, that's kind of how life goes. 508 996 that's how you get on to Brian's beat today. Hello. I'm on. You're on. Well, Brian, you made me think about decades past. My brother applied to become an FBI agent, and uh, he was very disappointed to be rejected. And um, uh, he even went to Washington, D.C. back then for an interview. But uh, they told him why. They weren't going to send any agents down here to interview people he worked with, neighbors, etc., or even his family, because they decided that uh, he could be unreliable because of a car accident that he had had several years uh, before, in which, unfortunately, on a country road in this area, a, uh, uh, a young boy ran out chasing a ball into the street. And my brother had to put on the brakes and a police report uh, measured the rubber and all that and said he was going at uh, legal, uh, 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 legally speed. Uh, but the uh, father was very put out as the boy was crippled and kept uh, a lawsuit going for five years. So the FBI told my brother that... Uh, that was a stressful uh, long-term incident, and uh, it could perhaps affect him emotionally in the future and make him unreliable. So, sorry, you can't be an FBI agent. Wow. So, they were extremely scrupulous. They were more or less protecting themselves from having some guy that would you know, misbehave or drop the ball and make them look bad. So uh, I guess they classified that under possible mental illness. Uh, I Again, I don't know what they would have classified that as, but 
I guess I, I, I guess to, to, you know what he he uh, got he, he got a, he got an interview. Well, yeah, up in Washington D.C. back then, but he also had to agree to uh, authorize agents coming down here and asking people questions. I, I think that's standard operating procedure. Well, it was back then anyway, but uh, I just thought I'd throw it in. You made me remind. Yeah, no, uh, I, 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 I and, and it. it. He was depressed over being uh, rejected. He was a Dudley Do Right straight arrow guy, so uh, he thought he had a great chance to get in. But, you know, I, my maybe they had is, enough applicants so they yeah. didn't have to choose anyone who had anything that. You so, know, how long ago was that? Pardon? What year uh, are we talking about? In the sixties. In the sixties. So him being a straight arrow, he was like no, no hippie or anything like that, or anti-war uh, person. He was a straight arrow, uh, and um, he thought it was uh, in. But by the way, uh, subsequently they found there was a COINTEL program operated by the FBI and the Army to uh, frame anti-war protesters by uh, attending rallies and putting marijuana in their pockets, you know, like a reverse pickpocket, yeah. and, and then uh, uh, informing the local police that, oh, there's this guy who's dressed this way, he's smoking dope, and they, they got 2,000 people arrested to take them out of the anti-war movement. They were framed. That was Operation COINTELPRO, if you've ever heard of it. Yeah, oh, I know it pretty well, yeah. yes. Uh, which brings up the whole thing dealing with integrity. What integrity has the FBI really displayed over, um, I don't know, 80, 90 years? I think all national police forces in every country uh, are questionable because they have such power and there are going to be uh, uh, abuses and, of course, uh, we need them, but uh, there much? should be watchdogs over them more uh, aggressively. And who's going to watch the watchdog? That's right. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I hear you. I, I, it, I would love to sit here and say we don't need an FBI, but I think in some way, shape, or form you do need a national. Well, we've got the marshals. Why can't the marshals do that? Well, they don't seem to be investigated too much for any abuses they might commit either. They're kind of secretive, aren't they? It's like government. Yeah. You know, yeah. Transparency is not in their lexicon. I was going to use that very word. There's no transparency, and it's even worse on our foreign policy. Uh, they don't really let us know what moves they're making on the international chessboard. And uh, we don't really have a vote about foreign policy, to tell you the truth. That's directly based upon uh, real information available to us, because it's all war secrecy. Everything is preventing or controlling the next war. I would say even NASA, uh, with its, you know, go to outer space, it's really preparing for uh, World War Three, which will be run differently from previous wars. And uh, even Trump acknowledged that we need a space military branch. Almost sounds like, uh, what's his name? Um, Ronald Reagan. Hey, thank you much for your call. I do appreciate it. Time for me to wrap things up. Ken Pittman will be taking over in just a bit. Uh, one final part to this judiciary letter. And it reads like this. The FBI's hyper fixation on Hitting Biden administration imposed DEI initiatives rather than qualifications that make the best federal law enforcement candidates and officers has created a climate within the FBI that puts the American public and American civil liberties at risk. Very interesting. So uh, just to let you know, the FBI apparently has changed its standards. Although I, I question that whole thing dealing with integrity.